You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Just a heads up, this episode is brought to you by the Script Summit Screenplay Contest, where you can win a cash prize or even a contract with a Hollywood talent manager. All you have to do is visit scriptsummit.com for more info. All right, welcome to the Successful Screenwriter Podcast. On this episode, I am joined by a guest host as we analyze and break down a film to discover what works and what doesn't. All right, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Jeffrey D. Calhoun, and I am, of course, joined by Christy Lee Lucier, staff writer and producer at WeFixYourScript.com. Christy, thanks for being with us. I am always excited to be here. All right, we're going to break down episode six of The Wheel of Time. This one is called The Flame of Tar Valon. Mm-hmm. I probably butchered that. That's Tar Valon, but okay. you know what? It's, <laughs> there's a contingency of people that say Tar Valon too. It's fine. All right. I saw the look and reaction on her face and I went, okay, so we're going right. to own this. All right, here's the log line. Moraine faces the consequences of her actions. Matt faces the darkness in himself. Egwene faces the most powerful woman in the world. All right. So I'm going to get into this for a second. Yes, let's do it. I feel like we took a big uh, side quest here. Side quest. That's a good, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling, go ahead. Uh, So here's here. This is the episode that I came to evaluate some things. And what I feel or what I sensed when we arrive at this episode is I think there's been a loss of who is the central character and whose story are we telling? I think that makes so much sense. I was thinking, I was thinking about it today. And when you have an ensemble show, Mm -hmm. it's hard to figure out whose story is this, but if mm-hmm. you use templates like Mad Men's Don Draper show, right? Breaking Bad, we know whose show that is. Game of Thrones, you can make an argument, but it's Jon Snow's arc. Right. It's his show. You can mm-hmm. argue it's other people. It is his show. He yes. makes the overall arc. Mm-hmm. So when you look at an episode like this, you go, whose show is this? Whose and, story? Mm-hmm. And it really is boy, you've got a hell of a point there. Yes. Yeah. And I actually, honestly, so we've been watching another Amazon show recently, The Boys. I love The Boys. I I love it. Love it. But it was kind of a a moment even last night watching an episode in season two. And I I turned to Lee and I said, overall, at the end of the day, I know whose central character this whole show is. Yes. And I can't say the same for The Wheel of Time, unfortunately. You're right. I, I feel that there's a sense that we need to tell so much story about each character and their right. journey that you get muddled into an episode like this where who who are we talking about What's and and the on? way th- i agree with you and the way the pilot sets it up and i know i hark on the pilot but listen the pilot sets up the entire run of the show the pilot Absolutely. means mm-hmm. a lot a pilot should never be a throwaway episode Right. So the pilot educates the audience on what this show is and who we should follow. So if we go back to the pilot, this should be a Gwen story. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, essentially, she's one of the first ones that we see and we kind of start a journey with her yes. at the beginning together. Yes. But the more you get into the show, you start going, is this Moraine's story? Right. Because Egwene story, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Egwene starts taking a back seat, and there is nothing wrong with having an episode here or there where you fill in a backstory or fill out a uh, development for a side character. Sure. You can you can do that for a supporting character, but you still need to bring in the main character in that episode. They still right. get an arc, right? Because mm-hmm. Television is broken into A, B, C, D, and sometimes even E plot arcs within one episode. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So when you get into this show or this particular episode, episode six, it's like, where did everybody else go? I mean, it's Uh all very much Moraine. And I'm going, okay, we're losing the thread. Right. And we're also 
we've we've lost the tone of it. Yeah, absolutely. It does take a, a tone shift in this one for sure. It really does. Like uh-huh. in, in Game of Thrones, that show is very much intrigue. It's intrigue, it's political drama, Uh and it's amassed behind a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of sorcery, and some, you know, medieval action. But at the end of the day, that is a political drama filled with intrigue. That is what Game of Thrones is. I will die on that hill. Now, this show is has had very little of that political drama it's had a little bit more of a ya feel to it for sure the drama with the kids um and now this episode we leaned heavy into the intrigue intrigue tone as like okay this is this is it's different than what we've been experienced we've had a little bit of the intrigue with i want to say your name was lalandra Leandrin, yeah. Leandra, mm-hmm. we've had a mm-hmm. little bit there between the characters, but we went full tonal shift in this episode. Right, right. And that can leave you a bit lost. And then it starts making you wonder, is this show trying to be everything to everybody? Exactly, exactly. Because at some at some level, you have to establish identity of what you are and yeah. lean into that and own that. And yeah. um, there are a number of episodes, even up to this point and in this episode, where there's an identity crisis feel. Yeah. Are we sure. going? Are we going with horror? Are we going with dark? Are we going right. with the YA? You can mm-hmm. have a YA love story that has a bit of horror. You can have it sure. with a little bit. Of, you can do anything with that because it's a love arc. Mm-hmm. But but we're going from horror to uh political intrigue to drama and uh, and i'll pitch you this stranger things is stranger things ever outside of its tone no yeah right 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 Mm -hmm. it's all it's a horror show right but it has drama at the end Mm -hmm. of the day and there's a little bit of ya there but at the end of the day you look at stranger things you can say what it is right and and this show was struggling to find its legs Mm -hmm. it found its legs and at the end of the last episode, when you and I spoke, I said, well, I really hope that they pick up the pace and they are able to move forward and not have almost like another slow episode where they struggle uh-huh. because then the show is going to, it's going to get tough. Right. And un- unfortunately, I feel like that's where we're at. Right. Right. I feel a sense of moving into this episode. It wasn't a it wasn't a necessarily issue of moving forward. You're clearly obviously moving forward, but I think it is, you found your legs, but now you're trying to introduce so many other aspects instead of carrying through with now you've found your feet. Right. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said earlier, we, it's a side quest. We, we just, we just, we did a lateral move. And Mm -hmm. one thing this show has killed it on is the teasers the beginning of the episodes it has crushed it i have really enjoyed the teasers of this show the opens yes the opens yeah Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. this this episode um started out of the blue with a new character we've never been introduced to and we get a a big dose of who they are and then it's it's the reveal that um she is the uh She's the Omerlin. Mm-hmm. She's the, the Omerlin, Omerlin seat. Yep. Omerlin seat, the queen yes. of queens. Yes. And yes. Um, so we got a big dose. So we used up the teaser for that to, to get to know this character. I understand why they did it, but it doesn't sit within what we've established within the show. Mm-hmm. Right. Within the show, we've established killer teasers that have awesome twists. This sure. this was an origin story. And right. they, they had to do it to make up for lost time because they were building into this intrigue and and mystery of the Omerlin seat. Right. Right. See, that was built in from the very beginning episode, teasing that all along the way. Mm-hmm. This is where it comes into you make a decision about a show or you make a decision about a plot line and you have to make sacrifices. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. In order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. When you love an idea of something, you will make a sacrifice 
for that to happen. But the question is, is it the right sacrifice? Is, is it the it, right sacrifice? Yeah. Is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Because if you cut that and you just introduced who the Amberlynn seat was pilot episode, right? We knew who she was and maybe she didn't like Moraine from the get-go and we built that in consistently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we could use this teaser to grab the audience in a different way. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's an interesting take on it for sure. And then the big reveal that they're lovers is even more powerful. Is yeah, because we mm -hmm. we built that out over an entire season. Mm -hmm. As it is now, I was just introduced to this character. You hit me with a heavy dose of her origin story, so I understand who she is. And then we know the power of the seat, and we get the big moment of Moraine throwing herself at the feet, which was powerful. I'm not sure. going to lie. It was a moving, dramatic scene. But then when we get to the reveal that they're lovers, it doesn't have the impact that it could have. Sure. Yeah. Because it, I just met this character. Right. Right, 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 right. And interestingly enough, in the book, um, we don't meet the Amarlin in the first novel. Okay. Um, she, That's, she's not introduced okay. until book two. Um, in fact, we don't even get to the White Tower until the second book. Okay. So they're covering um, some ground here. So they are covering some ground and kind of trying to pull from future source as aspects. Um, they wanted to get to the White Tower and have that introduction ahead of time, or at least earlier. Probably because it's so built up early it on is. in the show, they wanted yeah. to pay off visually. And I totally understand that. And I don't think it's the wrong decision. I just think or, or believe when you introduce a character within that episode, even though you introduce them in a really cool way where we feel for her because her father doesn't have a hand and she has to leave him, they built in a lot of story mechanisms and character development um, tricks to make you want to get behind this character and sympathize with them, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so that all was well done. It's just that structurally over the whole show, there wasn't any time for us to get used to this character we're just hit with it hey she's the ambulance seat and they're secretly lovers and mm -hmm. there's the secret mission right right and i i again opportunity could have been there and probably was there um in the first book there's so much talk of the white tower being the impending big you know, you fear the Armorland, you fear the White Tower. When right. you get to that point, you know you're in some deep water. Yeah. And um, that tension is built up. And I feel there there were opportunities to possibly do that so that when yeah. you did get to this episode, again, it was more powerful, that moment of actually seeing her for the first time right. and Maureen having to stand in front of her for the first time. Yeah. Because we're supposed to, we're supposed to feel and know that these Aes Sedai are extremely powerful women in the world anyway. Right. And so when somebody sees an Aes Sedai or you're in the presence of an Aes Sedai, yeah. you know that's power. But then when an Aes Sedai is in front of the mother, in yeah. front of the Amarlin, you're taking it to a whole new level. And there was missed opportunity to really build that tension through. It's like they were trying to use the fact that the Aes Sedai is so powerful, almost like they're a mini boss. And then the the queen is this like hidden boss level character that sure. you know, they're supposed to be afraid of. But I think showing her and developing her earlier on in the show uh, would have allowed more uh, opportunity of development. And then even, even making her out to be a bit of a villainous character could mm -hmm. even build into that moment of, oh, she's soft and she, sure. she's in love with Moraine. Um, now, here's another reason why structurally it feels like you're trying to figure out whose show it is. Um, I, it, can I hit you with this? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So in the monomyth, right? Joseph Campbell's system of oh yeah plot points, the monomyth. And I have my own system of uh, in the guide for every screenwriter, but, but in the monomyth, there's something called the reward. Right. Now, after the midpoint, a character goes through that death and return, which was two episodes. And then after that, they kind of deal with the aftermath and they recover. When they're done recovering, there tends to be a, a heart plot moment where they find someone that they love that means something to them emotionally. And they receive 
a reward, a new weapon, a new moment of truth, a new understanding, a new ability is gained through knowledge or whatever after they um, have had the rebirth moment and are right. met, met with emotional character. Sure. So Moraine gets that. You're right. She gets that moment with the Queen of Queens. I can't get the name right. Um, <laughs> because she gets the reveal of where the dark one is and that he's at his weakest. Mm -hmm. That is her reward for everything that they've been through. So it's a little muddy because if this is a Gwen story, we should be getting that with, through her, but we're mm -hmm. not, we're right. getting it through Moraine. So right. again, it's an ensemble cast and we're still trying to balance out character versus story. So that's why it can get a little confusing. Now, the way she earns that reward is through being ostracized from the Aes Sedai. And I thought, right, right. I thought that part worked. Yes. Yeah. There has to still, the plan still has to move forward. They still have to keep this plan that they've had for years a secret between the two of them that Moraine is out trying to find the dragon and so on knows, but can't reveal that she knows. The, so, and I want to ask you about that because mm -hmm. the I said, I cannot lie. So right. when she's asked to reveal the truth, she says, I cannot say. Oh, anyway. when she, when she's asked by, um, when, um so on asks her, do you know who yeah. which one it is? And, and, and she says, uh, I cannot say. She doesn't know. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't know in the show. In okay. In the book, we know that she knows. She okay. never says it, but we know she knows. Because there's other, there was another moment too where she can't lie. And then, um, and I, I'm not naive. Uh, uh, Egwene says, oh, have you seen Matt? And she says, I have watchers out waiting for them, but I can yeah. tell you on good authority that they're safe. And I'm like, um, does she have watchers out waiting for them if they're already there? You know what I mean? So like, I, right, right. I mm -hmm. feel like, uh, it's her play on words because Maureen is that she's eyes and ears. She's blue Aja and they're supposed to be those secret eyes and ears. Okay. Girls that All are right. Keeping tabs on everything. So she's not necessarily lying. She is saying a truth. Okay. She's a just truth. not answering a direct question. Yeah, that would be, which cool. is yes. It's like, it's like being married. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, well, I answered a question, but it's not the a, question. It might not be asked. what you were asking, but exactly. this is the answer I have prepped. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're going to go with that. I did I did do the dishes a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> Technically. Technically. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, I'm really hoping that that this thing gets back on track. You know, I mean, it, it, there is so much from what I understand that they're trying to cover Yeah. when yeah. They, they step through the gate. I mean, it has to be full on. Let's go. Let's get this thing going mm -hmm. from here on out or else the show is is going to be struggling. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So the end of episode six, we have arrived at the way gate and they go through. Yeah. Um, and then Matt is is the only one that does not go through the way gate, um, which was a story change because that actor is not returning to the series. Oh, mm -hmm. OK. So are they are they recasting him or is that is that character just are they writing him out? He has been recast so that oh, okay. character will stay. Um, but essentially, initially, I believe that the idea and in, in the books, um, he does go with them. They all go to the eye of the world together. Um, but this actor, they rewrote it to where he doesn't go through the way gate. Yeah. So it's easier so. to bring him. It's easier to bring him back then. I think that makes yeah. sense. So <laughs> speaking of men, I'm glad you brought him up. When it, when you have a plot like, like his with the darkness and the dagger and the mm -hmm. evil from, from the black city, he I was I was frustrated because he didn't defeat it. Right. Moraine mm -hmm. walks in and she takes it away. And right. then all is good and Matt's doing awesome. And that for me, I felt like unearned because I wanted to see a moment 
where Matt fought it off, where yeah. Matt had had that moment or where he didn't fight it off. And we see him kill somebody mm-hmm. like we saw him slice at her, but he's, you know, it stopped and then she took care of business. And I felt that was a disjustice to his character arc, because if you're going to put someone through that, let's see where it goes. Don't have this other character come in and solve it for him unless it's her story. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because this is where we start to have some questions about even the magic system okay. in, in the series. And this is a, a big kind of discussion in the fandom right now as well, where these are hints of where I see the writing is starting to actually diminish the power of the magic system. Okay. Um, this dagger is so powerful in the book that not one I said I could separate Matt from it. Oh, in fact, okay. they physically do get the dagger from him, but the darkness is still in him that he has to actually go to the tower and surrounded by a huge amount of powerful eyes that I has to be removed from the darkness. The darkness gotcha. has to flip from him. So he does go through a stronger arc and journey with trying to separate from that dagger. Yeah. Um, but I, in this episode, the writing takes it to where Moraine you know, is able to go in there and separate the dagger and it's not a problem. And then Matt's fine. And that's where we start to kind of go, okay, you know, we just saw an episode two episodes ago where these Aes Sedai are fighting off a darkness as well. And they're kind of overcome. Yeah, it took nine of them. It took nine of them. But then in this episode, the power of that dagger and the darkness of of Shadar Lagoth is just as strong. It's the dark one's power. It's the dark one's touch. And she's able to just remove it from Matt. So there's these questions of, you know, we start to kind of evaluate how strong is the magic system? What is the power level here? Who can do what? And what I, strength I, I is can, where? I can see why fandom would be frustrated with that. For from, sure. From yeah. a story system or, or from character development, what did Matt get? I mean, how did his character change? Did he change? Mm-hmm. Because to me, it feels like, I hate to say the F word, but to me, it seems like nothing happened. Yeah. He went, through, I, he went through this entire journey. Right. And did he change from it? Right. And I'm not sure we'll get that answer in season one, because at the end okay. of episode six is the last time we actually, unfortunately, do see this actor okay. and this role. Um, they are going to bring him back in season two, but um, I'm not sure we'll get that answer, that closure in this season. So maybe, I don't know, I can't say to this, but maybe uh, sacrifices were made. <laughs> sacrifices are said yeah. a lot in this episode. Uh, sure. Because... <laughs> um, because of that casting situation, perhaps that's what happened. But when I see a character go through something like this, of not knowing if you kill children right. and being possessed right. by a demon, right. uh, dark power, and then he doesn't even have the opportunity to show his inner strength to fight it off. Mm-hmm. And somebody else just walks in, hits him with the whole, holy it. water, mm-hmm. and he's all good to go. Right. You know, then I start going, okay, why did we even have that other than to chew time? Exactly. And give the character something to do. Or or toy on the this play that I feel they were going for, which is still questioning who might the dragon be. Right. right. Yeah. Um, they still want to evaluate and take that opportunity to give this audience a guessing game of yeah. every episode of who could it be. And they still wanted Matt to be in that pool of, well, maybe it's Matt, because Matt has this weird darkness thing going on now. So in the books, is it is it a big question or do they just kind of tell you, like, we know who it is and we don't um, have this big intrigue? Yes. So interestingly enough, in Eye of the World, um, it is more Rand centered, where we do see a lot more POV of kind of Rand's perspective. OK, but I honestly feel personally myself, and it can be argued in the fandom that um, Moraine is the central character in Eye of the World. It is her quest. Okay. It's her journey. She is okay. out looking for this dragon and has been for 20 years. Wow. So it's interesting that they went more of an ensemble route in this Yeah. One. I understand why it gives them more opportunity uh, to tell story and, and to kind of use that YA um, market. I mean, that's, sure. what they, that's, that's how they're billing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean, this this show could have very much been done from a Moraine set perspective. Absolutely. I, no. And no question. And with Rosamund Pike. Why not? I, I would be inclined to. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right? She's mm-hmm. so, so talented and incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm really curious to see where this goes. I, I, I don't dislike this show. And, and I didn't even find the episode boring. I, I thought the intrigue was good. And, and the intrigue aspect kept me interested on mm-hmm. what was going to happen. Um, I didn't have any reach for your phone moments. And that's all a compliment. I mean, I think the, oh, sure. I think the writing, yeah. I think the writing is there. It's just tonally trying to stay in touch with everything. Right. That's the balancing right. act that that I see yeah. the show struggle with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my favorite part of the episode is honestly the reveal of Moraine and Suam and their connection and their relationship, right. which has been in canon and spoken about in lore for years in that fandom, in the books, but we never directly see it. And so to be able to have that kind of um, payoff oh, for the fandom, okay. where we do get to see their relationship and their love on screen is probably my favorite part of the whole episode. Wheel of Time people are thirsty. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> thirsty, hungry, and This is some of that Wheel of Time fans have been waiting for. <laughs> and for they, then they should love the show because, because they, they dived into it. Yeah. Um, I know we're not re- re- we're not reviewing uh, Boba Fett, but Boba Fett came out recently, and I haven't gotten to see it yet, but I'm excited. Oh, can I? Oh, all right. Don't I'm spoil guess. it. I won't I'm say anything. The today. opening scene, I was like, "Yes, they went there," because I was worried they were Yay. they weren't going to go there, and they went there, and I was like, "That's for the fans, ladies and gentlemen." Exactly. So, you know, I think it's important to throw in moments like that. And I'm glad right. that they were able to do that and to make a canon, which is cool. Yeah. All right. So this episode is brought to you by the Script Summit Screenplay Contest, where you can win $1,000 cash or the chance to get repped by a talent manager. We had two get repped last year. Script Summit is 100% worth it. You go to www.scriptsummit.com. Do you have any more thoughts for me, Christy? Uh, I'm just ready. Um, I'm ex- I'm ready for uh, for you to see episode seven. I'm very um, interested <laughs> to see where we go with it. Now I'm nervous. That's that's like, a, is that a good ready? <laughs> is that a, is that no, a don't, bad ready? Don't be, don't be nervous. I, I will say that I've gotten private messages and several messages from friends and, and people in the fandom that are very appreciative of the take that we're approaching in this oh, realm where we're, t- we're talking about structure and we're talking about you know, in TV kind of episodic television, here's where we would yeah. be, or here's a moment like this. And they really, really appreciate that. So I'm, uh, what I'm looking forward to is seeing it through yeah. and how we kind of, how we approach it and how we take it from there. I'm really enjoying this. And we've had a lot of comments. We have like YouTube comments and then people on Twitter have, have hit us up and I'm, and, and we're appreciative of you guys that you, that you watch yeah, the show, you, you listen so to much. it. Um, it means a lot to us. We love doing this. And I think we do have a unique perspective because all of um, these uh, film reviews, movie reviews, TV reviews, or I think they call them reaction videos now yeah, that yeah. you see, they're all emotional based. And sure, there's some emotion I, behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to have a perspective from story of why this is happening, what right. is happening, why they're doing it, and how could they have done it in a different way right. from an educated um, professional like yourself. So, yes. yeah, uh, yeah, so it's I, exciting, I, it's interesting, and I'm yeah, again, I like doing it to too. The fans. Thanks to the fans for listening. You get a I'm couple watching. of screenwriting instructors in here, and this is what happens. Hey, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter by using my handle at ScreenwriterPod. And if you liked the show, please support it by subscribing and sharing the episode on your social media. 